So this little lecture is uh, about um, finding outliers in our data, and it's the first of two that we're going to do on uh, figuring out how to use statistics to compare uh, two different sets of data. So in this case, we're comparing a single data point uh, with a larger set of data. The first process that we're going to deal with to do that is uh, uh, concerns something called outliers. So if I look at this set of data here, um, you can see that uh, data point three sort of sticks out. Uh, looks like my average for the other data points is right around 10, but I've got one reading that says 13. Is this a problem, right? Or is it just a random variation? It's just kind of on the tail of my Gaussian curve. Um, why do we worry about that? Well, because one bad reading can really mess us up, okay? It can be a result of some kind of mistake we made in taking our data, uh, maybe we didn't control something in the environment, the air pressure, the density, something like that. Uh, maybe, our, maybe our measurement system actually glitched, right? And we got a bad data point. Uh, and because we squared dedeviance in a lot of our calculations, such as standard deviation, one outlier makes uh, uh, an outlying difference. It makes a, uh, a difference larger than you might think. For instance, uh, if we take the um, standard deviation of these five points, we get 1.37 meters per second. If I take out that one data point, uh, my standard deviation is uh, about one fourth of that value. Okay, so one uh, data point that's far from our mean has a kind of outsized influence on the rest of our uh, data set and its statistical markers. So, we have to decide if three is an outlier, right? We don't want to take out good data, and we want to be really careful that we're not trying to manipulate our data. So we want, to, we want a good process for defining when is something too far outside the norm uh, to include in our calculations. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use z-scores to do that. And so we're going to define a z-score for that outlying data point. Okay, so we have a a definition of z-score that we've used before here, and we're going to throw those values in. So my average with 13.1 in it is 10.7. I find that difference uh, and divide by my standard deviation. In other words, how many standard deviations uh, is 13.1 from the mean? And it turns out it's 1.7. So my z-score tells me that data point is 1.7 standard deviations uh, from the mean. Okay. Next question, is that more standard deviations than is acceptable? Okay. How do we define what our acceptable z-score is? Well, if we have a bunch of data points uh, over 60, we use what's called a three sigma test. Okay. That's exactly what it sounds like. Is it more uh, than three standard deviations from, uh, uh, from our mean? Okay, the reason we use three sigma is because once we're above three sigma, uh, three standard deviations, we're talking about a very small chance that this is a random occurrence. Okay, and if I have a lot of data points, I have a pretty good idea of what my standard deviation is. And so having an outlier that big, uh, we're going to sort of say uh, it's probably not there. And even if it is, uh, it's so far outside the norm. Uh, that it's going to skew the data uh, because we want to make those outline points again can be really uh, disruptive. And so we can write that again if we wanted to as Z99.7. Uh, In other words, the Z score uh, that is associated with the probability of 99.7. Now, if we have a smaller number of data points, our criterion is going to be lower. And so we use what's called Chauvinot's Chauvin. I can't do French. <laughs> Chauvin criterion, uh, which uh, defines that criterion as one, the probability, the z, the z score that is associated with the probability of one over two n. So here we took five measurements. And so I can define my probability as one over two n, which is one over 10. So uh, 10, a 10% 10 probability. What's my z-score that's associated 
with uh, 1 minus uh, 0 0.1, which is 90%, uh, I can use my z-score calculator and I'll look that up and I'll look up on my two-tailed plot, uh, what plot tells me I've got a 90, uh, or rather what z-score gives me a 90% chance of being uh, uh, within that range. And that z-score, uh, in this case, and you could check this on a, a z-score calculator, is 1.645. So if my z-score is bigger than that, uh, it's farther outside of the range than I'm willing to accept as a uh, random chance. Uh, and in this case, it is. Okay, so we see that 1.73 is bigger than 1.6. 1 uh, and so we can say, oh, that 13.1 is probably an outlier. Uh, let's take it out of our data. Why is the acceptable smaller when n is smaller? Um, this is because we don't know that data set as well. And that outlier has an outsized influence if we have a small data set. Uh, if we have 60 data points, one data point, even if it's an outlier, isn't going to make a huge difference. Uh, but if we have five data points, we want to make sure that all of our data uh, is pretty good. Now, in this situation, one thing that we might want to do is say, wait, we probably need more data than that. Okay, um, And so we can remove an outlying data point, but we want to think carefully about when we're doing this. Uh, especially if we find we have, we have more than one outlier, and as you start removing points, Chauvinot's criterion uh, gets even less and less uh, stringent. Uh, so the chances are you might remove a second point. At that point, you need to be thinking, well, I need to rethink my data collection process, right? I need to find a way to get more data points. Uh, so after we remove that outlying data point, then we go back and we recalculate everything, right? We have to find a new mean, we find a new standard deviation, uh, and we check to make sure uh, that everything's kosher. And that is how we uh, deal with an outlying data point. Next uh, little lecture, we'll talk about uh, how to compare two complete data sets rather than one data set and one point. That's, that's it.